Well, today, guys, we're going to talk about key economic themes, where we are right now, and what can happen next. Of course, everyone whom trains, pontificates, and postures about financial markets has a view. That's why it's called a market. But few people are as well informed as James Hughes, the chief market strategist for the UK and EU for Axie Trader, who has kindly taken time out of his hectic schedule today. James, a big welcome to you. Thanks for joining us. No problem at all. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Now, you've had something of an illustrious career so far. You were with uh, GKFX for two years, joining the company after a brief stint of less than a year at eToro. You are also chief market strategist at Alpara UK for four years. Goodness, what a career. Yes, well, yeah, it's been a long old time. So I've, I've been doing it for around uh, in this industry for around uh, 16 years now. So it's uh, so it's it's been <laughs> been going quite a long time, but it, it covers a broad a broad range of things. So I, I like to think that I'm uh, as informed as uh, as most people possibly can on on a lot of these things. But of course, with the markets and with trading, there is uh, always more to learn and always things that you don't quite cover uh, every single day. So there's some so there's always something new. Well, that's absolutely right. And uh, with your credentials, we can do a lot worse than uh, James Hughes. So if you don't mind, I'm going to jump straight into the deep end, if I may. Yeah, no problem. Excellent. So over Christmas, um, a few months ago, we had the traditional Santa Claus rally, a seasonal bull market in equities and in precious metals per tradition too. Oil also seems to be making sustained recovery. But what key themes do you kind of preempt for spring and summer coming up? Well, I think, uh, I mean, a lot in terms of these markets uh, is dominated by what comes out of the White House. Uh, and of course, Donald Trump is the whether we like him or, or loathe him, he is the he is the driver of, of, of everything. And and we can talk about the Fed, we can talk about economics, we can talk about the ECB and, and all of the major stories that go through there. But one thing that cuts through all of that whenever there is something big uh, is, is Donald Trump and his Twitter feed. So, I mean, one of the key themes that we have to look out for now is at the moment is these is trade wars, global trade wars. We, we've already seen the uh, the issues that, that the US have, have created with with the aluminium and steel tariffs that have been put in place. We know the negotiations which are going on between the US and Canada and Mexico over the NAFTA deal. Uh, so there's all of those negotiations still to go, but also in the last, even in the, just the last few days, we've seen uh, Donald Trump really focus on China and, and, and focus on uh, trade with China. And that is, of course, an enormous uh, fish to fry when it comes to any kind of a trade deal. So anything between the US and China is going to cause massive repercussions for the market. And uh, Donald Trump a few weeks ago famously tweeted that trade wars are great and they're easy to win. Well, if he's going into one with uh, with China, uh, he's going to have to show us exactly how he does win these because that is a is a fierce adversary to have when it comes to trade. It really is. And America have really helped China secure their place as um, the engine room of world economic growth, it would appear, um, in recent years, in recent decades, certainly the last 10 years. Yes, absolutely. They, they really have. And, and, and that's a, a real uh, issue, I think, for Donald Trump, to be perfectly honest. They've been the ones who have really pushed China to the forefront. And, and uh, there's always this con topic of conversation as to who's the world's biggest economy and whether it be the US or, or China. But I think if if you look at some of the numbers, China really does uh, really is an enormous powerhouse when it comes to uh, to global trade. But I mean, it's just not just those trade wars which are going to dominate um, these markets. I mean, there is the economics that go around it. And and what's interesting from an economic point of view at the moment is how we're moving out of these these low rate um, monetary policies and and, and financial. Uh, situations into an area of, of higher rates across the world, really. So, I mean, we're, we're looking at the uh, the Fed rate decision just this evening. We've got we've got the Bank of England tomorrow. Uh, these central banks are becoming uh, again; they're becoming more and more important. After, of course, for a long time, we've seen them not necessarily do too much because they've had to keep rates so incredibly low. So, there's this there is this shift that's going on. There is there is strong growth. In many areas, especially in the U.S., there's strong growth. There's there's the improving jobs and wages situation in the U.S. So that put that all pushes us to the fact that we're looking at more interest rate hikes uh, for the U.S. and they've told us that themselves. And what's interesting, even with the the the, the U.S. moving rates to the upside, um, the, uh, with their strong economy in the U.K., we've got this whole big cloud which hangs over us in terms of Brexit and these total yeah. uncertainties surrounding Brexit. But then if you look uh, at 
the economic situation and the monetary policy situation, they are different economically. We're not necessarily performing that well because we don't know what Brexit will do. But the Mark Carney and the Bank of England are looking to move interest rates higher. So there's, a, there's that big discussion. Of, and of course, another outlook for spring and summer this year is Brexit. We have to keep an eye on Brexit. Well, certainly with interest rates increasing across the board in America and um, England, I mean, or Britain, should I say, uh, do you think this will have an adverse effect on equities or do you think the will continue just to bubble upwards? Oh, I think there's I, I think we, we may have got past that stage in equity markets where, where we see rate hikes as bad news, because, of course, on the, on the pure economic standpoint, uh, a rate hike is usually um, negative in terms of uh, equity markets and positive in terms of the currency. Mm, so, yeah. but really, it's not seen as that so much anymore because because of the the old world we used to live in, where where obviously the financial crisis happened and and what we've had to see for the last ten years in terms of monetary policy has been so different. It's now slightly different that we see a movement to the upside in rates because it's now a necessity rather than anything else because you have to have to continue to move those move monetary policy on as the economy gets better and of course you had these really incredibly low rates when the economy was really struggling yes we have brexit but we're in no way in that sort of economic position anymore and you can't keep the same monetary policy as if the the, the country wasn't performing even though the growth is not looking stellar for the uk anyway yeah, well, certainly Brexit is a hot button issue uh, for the UK. Um, uh, arguably, the pound is um, undervalued. Do you think this is the way? I mean, certainly the British pound has absorbed all the bad news it possibly can with uh, Brexit. This took the market by surprise. And of course, the uh, surging popularity um, with Jeremy Corbyn and his momentum uh, party it is bad for business, um, as anyone can tell you. But do you think the British pound has already absorbed this and it's on the way up gradually against all the crosses? Well, I think it's interesting the way the pound reacts because the pound doesn't necessarily react to good or bad news, especially with Brexit. It, it, it more reacts to clarity. So, so when it comes to Brexit, the pound will go up as soon as we hear any clarity on Brexit, any sort of information that, that, that sheds some light on what post-Brexit Britain will look like. It's not necessarily good news. It's not necessarily bad news, but it's clarity. And anytime we're the opposite to that, anytime we get a a press conference which doesn't really answer any questions or or we get a uh, an announcement of a deal that doesn't really cover all the bases that's when we get negative in terms of the pound so it's a it's a real difference it's not necessarily good and bad news we have to also keep an eye on, on what sort of clarity we get but recent especially this week we've seen a, some big moves and some big losses on the pound so it's been fairly uh, fairly volatile um, but the brexit transition deal that we saw last week that has helped to, uh, sorry, earlier this week, that has helped to, to really push uh, things higher. And again, it's another step forward. It's another deal in place. Yes, we haven't covered up everything. We've still got this Northern Irish uh, and the Irish border issue, but we had did have some clarity. And that's why we saw the pound move uh, so aggressively earlier this week is because we announced a transition deal that is a step in the right direction in terms of clarity. And it gives us an idea of what post-Brexit Britain looks like, or at least that transition from March 2019 to December 2020. Well, certainly, aside from what's been decided officially um, by the government, it would seem that one week we get um, a positive set of uh, numbers or projections from various banks saying Brexit's going to be a good thing for Britain, and then the next week is going to be a detrimental thing for Britain. So, like you say, a lot of uncertainty at the moment, and this um, seemingly has become apparent in the London property market. But one thing that does seem to have certainty, or at least before Christmas, was <laughs> cryptocurrencies. Now, what is your view on cryptocurrencies? Do you think that they're just simply a fad or a realistic proposition, irrespective well, of talk, buying? I could talk to you from two, two different places on this, really. I mean, there is one, of course, where I, I work for a company that will offer uh, cryptocurrencies, and of course, they are another investment option. And, and for a long time, they're an investment option that really did have some legs. It was, it was very strong, was only going up. And but of course, there is always a worry when something like that happens. When we are seeing a market continuously move in, in one direction, it, it causes an issue, doesn't it? I mean, and there is always then that worry about that bubble bursting, or if something's moving so high so quickly, there is a, there is the worry that that comes off just as quickly. So, cryptocurrencies are a strange one. I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree in all in all of the 
the other. I mean, we seem to have a new cryptocurrency launch every other day at the moment. So mm. there are so many. It's not a case of jumping into every cryptocurrency you can possibly find and expecting sort of uh, triple digit uh, returns. I think it's a case of if you do want to invest in cryptocurrencies, really doing a little bit of research, understanding what they are and why they're used, and, and, and then making your, your decision going forward. And of course, the, the issue, the, the good thing now about cryptocurrencies is that, is that there are various different brokers who are trading them. Like Axie Trader, they're, they're offering uh, some cryptocurrencies and looking to offer more cryptocurrencies. So that gives you a, a bit more of a sound base. And, and the, the worries, obviously, about cryptos were that, well, how do I get my money out? Oh, there's a lot of uh, legal ramifications. There's no regulation. Yeah, on oh, the Wild West. Trading, exactly. Trading them with a, with a broker does help you from that point of view. But, I mean, they're incredibly volatile. Are they a bubble? Potentially, yes, they are a bubble. I mean, when you see something move the way it has done, you, you do see that, that that does have very much bubble tendencies to it. And, and there's no way anyone can say definitively yes or no, but it definitely has the characteristics. But uh, there's no way we can answer that question, is there? Well, that's very true. I mean, a, certainly a warning sign for me was the last trading day before Christmas, certainly uh, last trading day for equities, what I noticed was Bitcoin uh, was down about 30%. Now, that to me was a signal, obviously a, an alert warning, that uh, the smart or the bigger money could be quietly unwinding their positions as the world at large were busy, um, preoccupied with Christmas and preparations. And um, that to me was quite chilling, even though I don't actively speculate in Bitcoin, I, I really did see that as a warning sign of things to come. Mm. And it's collapsed, um, well, over 50% since then. Yeah, of course. And I mean, that, that is absolutely right. There is, there, there are uh, people trading this and, and unwinding positions all the time. And it's, get, it's people getting out faster than anyone else can. It's the, it is what causes the issues. And we've seen such big swings in, in, in Bitcoin. Uh, they continue. We haven't seen it ever since the turn of the year. We have kind of seen it uh, perform a little bit more like a like a normal asset, really, rather than being as volatile. But the problem is, when it goes, it really does go, and that's and and that's the issue. And it, you can't ever be sure where the news flow is coming from, why the moves are happening, and and that always uh, that always worries me as an investor. That 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 would that would be a, a bit more of a, a worry for me if I was holding a long term position there. Well, I, would you imagine it's safer to trade um, cryptocurrency as a derivative with a broker, say, for example, like Axie Trader, rather than just buying it on one of these unregulated um, kind of exchanges where you find that at the last minute you have to <laughs> yeah. pay them to actually get your money back? Yeah, well, that, that, that's obviously going to be the case, isn't it? I mean, I think that the issue that you have is that there is, I mean, I know a lot of people who trade and I, I like Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. They like the fact that the regulation isn't there. There's no red tape and more can happen uh, with it. But of course, uh, that's not necessarily good when you do, if you get in trouble with it or if you end up losing money with it or you want to get some money back out of it. The good thing you have when you trade it with a broker like Axie Trader is that you, we are regulated by the, the FCA. So we're regulated by the UK financial regulator. So, so uh, that's much, much safer, I would say. Oh, absolutely. And you've been around for a long time and no doubt you'll be around for many years in the future. Um, a lot of people see a Bitcoin as the gold of cryptocurrency. And I'm inclined to agree with that as they are seemingly um, the foremost uh, choice. But moving on to precious metals, I mean, we've been heavily long on gold ever since uh, mid-December and we've done very well from it. And we've uh, positioned ourselves in for a long term buy over the next few years. But certainly from your vantage point, do you think that precious metals will see their 2011 peak anytime soon? When I say soon, I mean within the next five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, soon, not necessarily within the next couple of weeks, but within the next five years. I mean, yes, yes, there is a potential there uh, for sure. And I think what you have to look at with gold for a long time, especially with gold, remember gold was a safe haven if anything mm. was happening it was it was a safe haven and that that was for the, for the early years of my career and a long long time before that that was why people bought gold as as the sa the safety valve but that it became for a long time for for a good 5 6 years um just after the financial crisis it became particularly unpopular it, it became out of fashion to buy gold as a safe haven now, with the geopolitical situations that we have, we've had ever since Donald Trump came to the, went to the White House, it's it's come back into vogue to buy gold as a as a safe haven. And I think 
with with Trump still in the White House and and could be there for for longer than a lot of us think, there is um there is going to be these geopolitical situations. We've seen exactly what happened with what's happened with North Korea. We've seen the fact that Donald Trump is is picking fights with various different countries over trade. So with those sorts of situations brewing, I think gold is coming back in as that safe haven again. So that kind of points to the fact that yes, I think think there is that upside to be had in, in in gold. Plus there is, when you consider gold really is paid to the US dollar, so the fact that you have got real, I think a real negative US dollar feeling, especially for the next, uh, especially the rest of this year, I would say, um, that, that US dollar does look particularly negative. I think from that point of view, you do see gold benefiting from that side. Okay, well, well, bearing that in mind, I mean, our entry of gold in mid-December was both based on a technical analysis and the seasonal argument, as traditionally precious metals have done very well um, from mid-December throughout Christmas, January and February. Um, mm. But bearing in mind, I mean, the arguments, um, fundamentals versus technical, do you think that swing traders, our style of trading, can be profitable from technical trading alone? Or do you think that it's imperative that they combine it with fundamentals and have the overall context to what's happening geopolitically? I don't necessarily think it's imperative to, to mix the two. Obviously, it's, it's in, to have more strings to your bow is better than having just one string, isn't it? So I think, yeah. I think the, fact, the fact that you can look at um, macroeconomics uh, and look at the fundamental news really does help. I mean, you look, look, at, uh, look at an example like today, I mean, to, this afternoon, uh, this evening we have the Fed um, releasing a, their their rate decision. Now we expect rates to go higher, but there are all of the discussions around the dot plot changes, which we could well see, and and that Jerome Powell's first first uh, start as a as a, at a Fed meeting. There's so many different things that could come in here, and and there are so many different outcomes that could happen on the markets. We take some of these currency pairs, for example, technicals alone aren't going to help you in the in the short term. But when we get to these longer term levels and, and we start jumping through these shorter term numbers and get to the longer term levels, then yes, that's when it comes in. But the fundamentals are what gives you an idea about where that reaction happens first. And without the fundamentals, there's no way you would you would be able to see where these markets will go in the initial few moments and then and in the initial moves to the upside or downside. You you wouldn't get an idea of that without those fundamentals. So I think Marrying the two together is, is really important, but of course, technicals are are, are incredibly important to anyone. I, I'm a qualified technical analyst, and I look at technicals more than more than I do look at the the fundamentals. But I think, of course, it's it's important to have have both aspects there. So very much like a murder mystery, the more clues you have, the higher the probability. Absolutely, that is absolutely the case. <laughs> so, I mean, technical analysis has always been good in terms of getting a, an efficient entry, like I say, rather than a dirty entry. Um, but taking into consideration the context, context, sorry, for example, like the seasonality, like the fact that various asset classes have uh, traditionally done better at certain times of year than other times of year, like we mentioned the Santa Claus rally, and of course gold, precious metals doing well over Christmas, January and February, historically, and oil in February. Um, I mean, do you think that that's a good enough context, or would you personally look for other more? Yeah, I, I mean, I think see, seasonality can be... Uh, the, the only problem with seasonality is that, that there is nothing to say that the same thing is going to happen again. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, agreed. That's the issue. So, yes, I agree that, of course, sometimes these these things do work seasonally, and especially when you, you get sort of equity markets tend to move uh, quite seasonally as well. So it's definitely an aspect. But marrying a, a seasonality move with... The likes of technicals. Where is it in its trade cycle? Uh, trend cycle. Uh, where is it in in sort of its economic cycle? Those those things all marry together. And and of course, I know there's an issue to say that it, look if you if you wait for the perfect trade, if you wait for all of the these aspects to line up together, you'll never end up placing a trade because the chances are they don't ever necessarily all happen at the same time. Yeah. But it, it's it's making sure you get the most amount of uh, of sort of factors in a row that you possibly can, maybe not necessarily waiting for everything to happen because that, doesn't, that perfect trade doesn't necessarily exist, but uh, making sure you're comfortable with, with exactly the amount of uh, these factors that you've got on your side at the time of your trade. 
No, you're absolutely right. That is an issue for a lot of traders, actually, um, who have a fear-based disposition when they are simply waiting for everything, all the stars in the universe to line up before entering into the market. And even more um, detrimentally, uh, the trade goes the other way. <laughs> and that increases yeah. that vicious circle. Um, but I mean, it's no secret, really, that trading does, in fact, have a high failure rate, despite it um, being very easy to get into. In fact, it's the easiest it ever has been to get into today. Um, what key obstacles do you think retail traders face and how can they overcome them? Well, look, I think I think with the issues that we have as retail traders uh, is is the emotional side of things mm. is, is sort of how we get how we get used to actually placing real trades. That, that's uh, something I've encountered uh, a lot in my career is, is, is almost people trying to, uh, trying to use the likes of demo accounts and things like that to, to say, oh, look, I'm testing my trading strategy and then I'll be able to uh, push on with my real account. But of course, it's totally different using a demo trading account to using a real account. It really is. You're using, using your own money and you react completely differently. So, uh, I'd, I'd always say if you, when you're using demo accounts, don't don't look at that as a as a test trade. Don't look at that as a as trades that you would place if you had a real account, because the likelihood is that you would you, you just won't, and you'll you'll react completely different. Use your demos. Use your time before you have an account to make sure you know the system, and that's another that's another key point. I think. I mean, a lot of people trade MT4 these days, but there's so many different. Um, different platforms out there. Make sure it's hard enough to make money trading without making mistakes on your trading platform. So make sure you know the ins and outs of your trading platform. And I know that sounds very simple uh, and, and, and really, really sort of one of the most basic things, but you'd be surprised how many people will lose money or, or make and by making mistakes on their trading platform, clicking wrong buttons, not knowing how their broker works, not knowing who to speak to at various different points. Those things cost you money when the market moves. So making sure you understand those areas and, and, and stick to your guns as well. I mean, I, I think what you have to do is is you have a trading strategy when you or you should have a trading strategy when you come to the market. Treat your trading like a business. Treat it as if you're a, if you own your own business, treat your trading like that. Really manage it well. Keep on top of it, and 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 it's almost if you're serious about making money in trading, it's you have to take it as seriously as you would a career, even if it's not your career. If you've got another job, uh, a, a full time job on the side, and you're and you're trading, you're trading sort of part time or here and there. Take it as seriously as you can, because at the end of the day, this is real money, and the opportunities are are, are definitely there if you can be. Uh, if you can sort of be patient enough. Yeah, wholeheartedly agree with you. And I think, it, like you say, I think it's absolutely crucial for people to get out the demo trading uh, mode or fog, should I say, because ultimately you need to master uh, the emotions from trading. And it, the sooner you can do that from a live funded um, account, the better. It doesn't have to be a lot of money, agreed. But as long as it's with money, ultimately we all have emotions attached to money to a varying degree. And I would say, I've always said, the far sooner that people actually put those in check for when they move up to bigger money, the better. Yeah, exactly. And, and we always say, I mean, we don't just say this in trading, do we? We always say the biggest, the best way to learn is being thrown in at the deep end when we talk about anything. Even when we talk about our children learning to swim, a lot of people will say the best way to teach them is by throwing them in and letting them get on with it. Well, yes, exactly. That is, that's the same The same kind of adage goes with trading. Is, is You have to kind of learn by your mistakes. And do you know the best traders I've ever met in my 17 year experience in this market. The best traders I've ever met are the ones that understand two things. They understand how to lose money and they understand that at some point they will lose some money. Yeah, and they take risks. I mean, two words, like you say, I mean, from all the people um, I've interviewed over the years, including my own experiences from trading the markets for about 11 years now. Um, you can strip that back to two words, and that's patience and discipline. They're the two key tenets of a successful trader, I would say, in my opinion. Um, but for Absolutely. But for people, James, I mean, obviously you've had quite a star-studded career, and understandably there'll be a lot of people listening who would probably want to follow in your footsteps. What would you recommend to them specifically in order to get started? Well, I mean, I, I think it's sort of, you need a degree of luck to some point. Of, to, to, to some point, of course, we all have our <laughs> we have our degrees of luck. Uh, I we mean, do. I'm not uh, in any way um, uh, necessarily fully educated, but I've I've done my education 
in trading, if you like. I, I got opportunities earlier in my career, and then I've I've got the academic qualifications within the industry, but I didn't have the academic academic qualifications previously. But that's not the be all and end all to to things. It's it's a matter of of working hard and and, and understanding that that there is always something to learn. There are so many analysts and chief strategists and 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 whoever you may think who who are very different to that. Who are who are very much their way it's their way or, or no way if you like and and you have to realize that you don't know everything there's always more you can learn the markets will always do something you don't expect there will always be something else that you don't understand that, that's happening and you just have to understand and not be arrogant enough to, to think that you know how this industry works or know how the markets work because you absolutely never do well, ego is a big bugbear for many people trading, myself included, actually. I remember I got up first from university. I fell into trading uh, by necessity, actually. And I thought I was, a, <laughs> dare I say, invincible. And of course, the market uh, punished me after a matter of days and I had to eat a healthy mm. dose of humble pie. Absolutely. And I think there's one thing that we all have in common and, and it, 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 it strings us all together. And that's from me and you to the to the the chairman of the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, uh, the presidents, we all have one thing in common, and that is that none of us have any idea where the market will go. Once we place that trade, yes, we can have informed, informed decisions, and yes, we can use technical analysis to try and predict where we're going, but at the end of the day, once we place a trade and we're in the market, it could do absolutely anything, and we have no control. So what we have to make sure that we're doing is just making sure that we're protected. And if you're protected using the risk management tools that are there, then then you will live to fight another day. And that's what it's that's what it's about. It's it's getting to the end of your trading day and living to fight another one. Don't don't take it too long. Don't just don't stay in positions that you you can't afford to be in. Live to fight another day. Absolutely. Well, James, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us today. We really appreciate your uh, pearls of wisdom. Um, for those people who want to find out more, where can they find you, James? Oh, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, I am on Twitter, like most of us are, which is James underscore Hughes UK. You can follow me there <coughs> and on the Axie Trader uh, website and blog and YouTube channel. Fantastic. Well, those links will be underneath the video. Thank you very much once again, James. No problem at all.